Today, we have a very special guest, our one regular guest to the channel, Cecilia. Oh, hi, all. Cecilia, Cecilia's back, and she is cameraed up today. She's oh, showing exciting. her face. Um, Cecilia is, uh, Cecilia, we're not even giving you an introduction anymore, but Cecilia is, let's give this as your introduction. Cecilia's cameraed up today because she has some huge announcements. And let's jump right into it. Not even, not even give them content. Just, uh, just be blatantly advertising things. Yeah, just like just hit them with the the good stuff of the advertising. So, <laughs> um, well, there was a couple things. One is that I deleted my Reddit account, which seems kind of silly to even share, but was a big deal for me. It's something that I had thought about doing for a really long time and went ahead and did it. So my Reddit account is deleted. Um, and that was just kind of cutting a tie for me. It like felt like it was a, um, a bit symbolic of being like, okay, I'm done and I'm, I'm cutting this tie. And it's not necessarily that I'm cutting that tie with the people there that I've met, but it's more just with like that kind of community and that way of sharing this information. I wanted to move on from that. Um, so then I also did launch my own website, which I think is really exciting. Uh, so it is CeciliaHendricks.com. And I think because their camera, you can tell me if I'm wrong, like are people going to see my name here in my? Yes. Okay. Because my probably spelling. Will can be a little different. So um, yeah, it's CeciliaHendricks.com. Super excited gonna, about it. We're going to link, we're going to link obviously in the description in the comments to Cecilia's new website. And also Cecilia, spit I've it out. I have launched a YouTube channel, which has one whole video right now, but awesome. it's very exciting. Um, so I really want to start getting kind of my information out and sharing my ways of improving your life and the things that I found have really worked for me. Um, one of the big things that I focus on, not only on the blog content that I'm writing, but also um, within the YouTube channel is really using kind of habit changes to add joy to your life. So it's taking everything that I have read, which Tim is, you know, I am a huge reader. Um, I'm reading all the damn time and multiple books at one time and lectures every day and etc. But taking all of that and really putting it into something that worked for me on my life, I really kind of fumbled around my way for the first couple of years. I felt like I was pretty confused on why some things would work and some things, you know, wouldn't work. Um, and I'm really starting to get into, you know, a flow and I want to share that with other people. A lot of that is adding like joy to your life and then also figuring out how we as humans work habitually and how things that we do are habits that are ingrained in us. Um, and, you know, there's Dr. Joe, which I don't know how folks feel about that, but one of the books that I read that I really, you know, enjoyed was Changing the Habit of Being Yourself. And then Maggie recently, just a couple of days ago, with a video that I was obsessed with, had a video that was very blunt. Um, and hopefully maybe you can link to that one too down in the we description yep. about your identity and what it like truly means to change your identity. And it's not just telling yourself like, I am this person. It is truly becoming that person and stepping into that identity. And you can really only do that if you change your habits. Uh, it all ties into what Neville teaches. It all ties into, I think, what Abraham Hicks teaches, Like, but it's simplifying it in the ways that made sense for me. So that's what I would like to start sharing with folks. Yeah, that's it's very exciting. Um, we're really excited to have Cecilia in the YouTube family. That was a joke, YouTube family. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to say F, F YouTube, um, even though we're on it and I love <laughs> YouTube. Uh, no, but I'm, I'm super excited. Yeah, to me too. You, and to have you, you having me on these kind of like opened that for me. So I appreciate being invited and, and being able to have these conversations because it was really coming to this. I was like, oh, I enjoy this. Like I enjoy sharing the information this way. Um, I think that there's, you know, a lot of value to it. Um, and yeah, so thank you. It was great. I, I love being here and I, I'm happy to get started in this. My The pleasure is all mine. Seriously, you're, you're, a great guest and always always i hope you come back to visit um, absolutely this show sometimes but i mean this is the loaded question is this more gratifying than being sent multiple poop pics for you know from the ne neville subreddit 
I don't know. I mean, well, that was pretty special. The only thing that was really disappointing about that is that it was the same ship picture over and over. <laughs> like, it well, wasn't even a new vary. one. Yeah. yeah. It was like no corn. There was nothing. It was just the same one <laughs> over and over. <laughs> Never subscribers this channel has have, have left the building. Just kidding. This is why you're yeah, here, exactly. folks, for the hard, yeah. the hard hitting. Yeah, just so you know, those. this is this what um, we're here for. Um, the, uh, I, I did want to, I guess, touch really a little bit more about what you just said about Dr. Joe and then, you know, habituating, like changing, being the person you want to be. Because, I mean, you talk about, you're underplaying it, you're, you know, being humble, but you talk about that so well, and you, you have in Reddit posts about, you know, and, and talking on here about the state you're coming from, right? I mean, that's mm -hmm. really what, you know, there's all these different states, but like your predominant state, your state that you're kind of operating from as a default most of the time or the majority of the time it doesn't have to be like right. most of the time um how important that is I, I love that's one of my favorite things about neville too is like i mean i don't take it that literally it's like you're in this state now you're in this, but it's like this idea this very sound psychological idea that what you primarily believe yourself to be and feel yourself to be is what you basically are and what you become so even if you are not externally a wealthy, healthy person, if you feel yourself to be wealthy and healthy on some significant level, chances are that's going to, you know, materialize in some significant way in your external world sooner than later. Yeah, I think, and what's, it always ends up feeling like it's something that would have happened regardless. And I, so this is something that I have found, right? Is like, if you start to really feel a certain way, and then I think what happens is that you have confirmation bias that gets fed back to you. So, but it may start slow, right? And so it's like, let's say that I'm trying to feel I am healthy. And so maybe you have a chronic back issue. And so you start to really embody somebody who's healthy and doesn't have a chronic back issue. Well, then slowly you may start to wake up one morning and be like, oh, my my back feels kind of better. I'm, I bet I slept better. And then you go on with your day. Well, that little change then has confirmed to yourself and to your subconscious that yes, I am somebody who's healthy and look, my back feels great. So then maybe the next day you pick something up off the ground and you're like, huh, I feel pretty good. And then it's like you do, you start to get this confirmation bias. And then all of a sudden you may forget either your imaginal activity or you may end up saying, well, that would have happened anyways. So, you know, it's just kind of a chance or maybe these stretches that I started to do. Because one thing that I do truly believe is that let's say that I have a growth on my neck, right? And I'm like, Ugh, gross, I want to get rid of this growth. And so I started thinking, oh, they don't have this growth on my neck. And if I get a growth on my neck after talking about this, I'm going to be pretty pissed off at myself. <laughs> but so I have this like growth on my neck and I don't want that. And so then my day-to-day -day life leads me to this new doctor who um, specializes in some injection that can get rid of the growth. To me, that is it playing out. That's not some, you know, it's not a coincidence that that's right. happening. That's, that's, that's the process. Part of it. That's the process. So whether it's a pill that it takes me to, whether it's a specialized therapist that it takes me to, whether it's a, you know, new type of back treatment or something or stretches or yoga, because then people say, they're like, well, you started doing yoga every day and that's why your back feels better. Well, yeah, but I was led to that because I had this imaginal activity. So, um, and it's meant to be that way. It's like everyday miracles. And the more that you start to focus on those everyday miracles, the more that you get them. That, yeah. That's my point of view. Yeah. I mean, it's, again, it's just it's like, that makes sense to me. You know, that yeah. makes like psychological sense. I don't think that's like running right up against the wall of, of medical science or psychology. I think like there's a lot of crossover there where people are like, oh yeah, we can agree on these points. Like mm -hmm. while being like, all right, I'm going to manifest this, the growth is there and I'm just going to manifest it away by imagining it very quickly. You know, it's going to be a, gone in a week. I think both of us are far out there enough to say that that's possible. Oh yeah. I, but at the same time, I think it's far more likely for most of us to like find that doctor, find that cream, find mm -hmm. that pill, find that something, that impetus, that action to take that seems entirely natural, which then in turn makes it so that that growth or whatever goes away on the neck. Agreed. Um, 
and again, it's like these subtle common sense things, which are just not discussed in both our opinions enough in the, in the Neville and law of assumption and law of attraction community at large, which is why um, it's great to welcome you to the YouTube, the YouTube family. Um, it's interesting because you would see it in Reddit a lot where folks would say, well, you know, you shouldn't go to a therapist or, you know, why should I go to a therapist or why should I go to this doctor if I can just, just read that way just read, yeah, just read it. it I know it's, and, and I read it a lot <laughs> um and but it's like you know the more that I would think about it and would look at it I'm like no this is I mean I truly believe that it's God like my spirituality has me completely believing this is God God is in absolutely everything so any religion if you were to say well so is God in everything and they say well Yes. Well, then God's in the doctor. God's in the therapist. God's in the treatment. God's in anything that can be externalized here from me. Um, and so I should be able to trust those paths that I take versus, you know, um, being like really resistant to them because it's either Western or Eastern medicine, whatever it is, because, you know, sometimes I, I think that it can play in both fields. And I think sometimes when you have that like gut feeling um, of not doing something, there's a reason for that too. Like for me personally, and I'm not giving any kind of medical advice, but years ago I had, you know, an issue with my neck and um, I rode horses for many years and I definitely hurt myself quite a few times and I had issues with my neck and they put me on a medication that the whole time that I was on that medication I just felt uncomfortable about it and this is well before I knew anything about any of this stuff and I was like I'm so uncomfortable taking this medication I don't know why I just don't feel good about it so I stopped and I started looking at some like additional type of treatments to do that I could work you know on my neck at home um, and I came to find out you know a few years after that the medication had uh, quite a few side effects that I you know would not want to have um, and so I think that was also you know a little bit of myself my subconscious kind of edging me that you know you can find a different way um, and so I think really starting to listen to yourself and believing your intuition and stop second guessing everything because you're concerned that you're going down a wrong path because you really can't I, I don't think you can I think anything you do you can get back um so I don't think there's like really a wrong way to go couldn't agree more all, all, all paths not only lead to God all paths are God exactly you know yeah. and and this um idea of like the life-giving principle which I think Joseph Murphy talks about in the power of your subconscious mind and elsewhere um, is so powerful. Like where, you know, we really, generally speaking, at least, I think everybody listening to this would agree we're, we're meant to be, we're intended to be healthy as well mm -hmm. as happy and, you know, at peace. Right. And this life-giving principle, why not work with it as opposed to against it? You know, it, it, instead of limiting yourself, we'll be like, well, I have to just manifest this away by doing sats. Like, why not be open to any avenue that you could take to, to resolve the issue as, as positively and easily as possible through this life-giving principle of health, you know, right. of, 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 of feeling okay. And another good point you, you make there too, is a lot of these times when we question these principles in this process, I think it can be helpful to think about examples in our own lives before we knew anything about this stuff on a conscious level, before we read Neville mm -hmm. and how accurate it can be. Cause I've certainly had like, like little medical stuff or health stuff or stuff where like, you know, it didn't feel right. And like, I, I trusted my gut. I trusted my life giving the life giving principle and it resolved the issue without any of the stuff that would have been recommended from like, if I took a more conventional, rational approach to it. Right. There's also been plenty of times where like, I'm glad I took the traditional conventional, rational approach and it felt right. And it was a good thing to do. And there's been plenty of times in the past before I knew about this stuff as well as still now, but mm -hmm. more so in the past where I went down the wrong path because I was overthinking, overanalyzing it and not listening to my gut, to my intuition, to that life-giving principle. So I think you make a really good point there about taking a look, like taking a look back at the past before you knew anything about this. And if you sit down for a moment and I've done this kind of a few times I think I wrote about it but I, I don't really remember now oh gosh like pulling that off my own head um but I think I wrote about it a while ago but if you take a look and you sit down and you think of something that you can remember the path to how you got to it 
you can actually start to trace it back. Like the thing with the medication that we're talking about, I've had it happen with people or with jobs, et cetera. And that I actually think helps build your faith when you can say, oh, wait a minute, I continued to have faith in this unknowingly because I didn't know about this kind of stuff, but it ended up working out exactly in alignment with my beliefs or state or whatever you want to call it. Um, I think that's a really helpful way to start building faith. And people, it's pretty much like the latter experiment, just with doing it with like past life events versus doing it with like a ladder. Right. Or a cup of coffee or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Tennis ball or whatever else. It is. Yeah. It's, I mean, there's so many good examples. If you look at it from this more practical process oriented way mm-hmm. where it's like, of course, I've been doing, it's like, I literally have been doing this my whole life. I just wasn't. Right as conscious of these, these particular principles as, um, I am now, you know, it's like Mm -hmm. that, that kind of a viewpoint. Um, before we get too off into the weeds, I know that people wanted to discuss, um, the letting go process with you. And obviously that term is a very loaded term. It's kind of almost a vague term at this point because it's, it's so overused. Um, it's something that we explore on, you know, on my podcast and on this channel a lot, but I I know that viewers, you know, are very interested in hearing something, some of the stuff you have to say about it in whatever way you want, because I think people listening to this know that letting go means different things to different people. So I think people are wondering what it means to you and then like how you let go, um, you know, in various scenarios could be specific or general. So one of the big things for me personally, has been, I don't really focus on a letting go, like as in a conscious effort. And I will say the more that things are working out for me, the easier and like quicker, I wouldn't say easier, actually, I would say quicker it's become. Because I used to kind of have this like thought of like, oh, I have to let go. Um, And I would almost make it this like huge effort force like I could feel the attempts to let stuff go and that created a lot of struggle within me because I wasn't actually letting go right like that's Mm -hmm. that's pretty fake um and I would attempt to do it like oh no I let that go so of course it's going to happen and blah 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 and the letting go I've actually found happens very naturally when you actually start to embody the state that you are and like my So this like launching of everything for me is kind of a perfect example. I've been thinking about doing something like this for a couple of years and I've always talked myself out of it. I've always been a little like, I don't know if I want to do that. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Um, I had some fears that were, you know, kind of within it as well. And things like just really kind of dumb things when I look back on them, you know, fear of like what other people might think or what people might say that know me, you know, in life and et cetera. I'm like, well, why do I care what they think? Um, And I'm just not going to concern myself with that. But so the more though that I started to identify myself as someone who is launching a business and someone who has information to share and someone that is um, able to communicate it in a way that other people find beneficial, which to me felt like then that's like a gift that I think I should share. And I feel a little kind of like self-inflating saying that. And I don't mean to be so I'm still overcoming that part of it but I should share this information this is the person that I am and the more that I started to like feel like that person my mornings have changed the things that I'm working on the things that I'm focusing on um I've noticed that the ideas that I have for content like I have pages and pages of like content ideas and things that I want to share and starting of blog posts and content and you know um you know, courses and et cetera that I, that I want to get started on. And it was literally like overnight, this stuff just started fucking pouring out. Like I had no, I couldn't stop it. And I was like, this is amazing. I've like filled an entire, no, I don't have a hero. So I'd hold it up, but this like entire notebook full of stuff that was not there before. So to me, I did let go because I just started to make small habits until they became a routine for me that was solidified in my identity. That 
to me is the key. And for me, that creates the letting go because now I don't have anything that I have to hold on to. I don't have to be so specific on trying to do a technique or something along those lines or, or be kind of more panicked about what I'm doing because it's just starting to happen naturally because that's naturally how I'm identifying myself now. Um, and when you get to that point, the letting go just feels very, it doesn't even have to be called letting go. And I think maybe that's kind of part of what you were saying. It's so vague because people are trying to force this like letting go of something. And really all that it is is space is because you already feel that you are that person. Um, it's the same way. I know years ago in a post I wrote, if somebody came to me, like I'm a mom, I've got three kids. If they came to me and they said, you're not a mom, like hell I am. Like I wouldn't even worry about that in any kind of way. I don't have to let go of the fact that I identify as a mother. I, I've already let that go because it's so natural to me that I'm a mom. I'm not sure if that makes much sense, but feels a little rambly, but that's my long kind of answer to that. The more natural you make it, even if it feels unnatural to start, the more that you continue to go back to it, the more that you just kind of start to let go. And it's very light feeling and it's, it, it's a very peaceful way of dealing with like your kind of life goals or the desires that you have i love that i love that um the the thing about being a mom that reminds me of an example i get a general example i gave a manifestation through relaxation which was a neville book i i wrote back in like i think 2016 about like if you've always been healthy if someone comes up to you and is like you know, how are you doing? I know you've been so unwell and you're like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, like, you yeah, must have confused me with somebody. Right. When you're really in a, the state that you want to be in or, or your actual, you know, your desired yeah, state or whatever, in. you're in it. You aren't thinking about it all the time. And that's like right. the state of the wish fulfilled. It's like, I'm not thinking like, it's like, you're not thinking about being a mother. Like I'm, I'm not thinking about being no, healthy. And that's, I just it's am. Like, you just am, you just are. So it's not like you have mm -hmm. to keep on affirming yourself. I'm a mom, I'm a mom, I'm a mom. It's like, no, you've, you've been a mom for a long time. Like that's, it's, it's done. It's over. Um, but that's really interesting. And again, I think so psychologically, uh, like straightforward, like having small habits, utilizing the habits to slowly shift your state into a more desired state. And again, I I'm using state a lot just because mm -hmm. I like how you use that term more than frankly, anybody. So like, I know oh, that thanks. like, you understand that like states, like states can shift and that like your habitual shift, it, like just, yeah, you can shift a state. I don't want to say mechanically, but like habits are like you decide, it's not like the sexy technique necessary, necessarily. It's like, you're just deciding to implement a habit and the habit by repetition and doing it consistently day after day or what have you will cause a shift change is, does that sound the, absolutely I... well in part of that though is that you have to identify like what is kind of your cue currently so it, the habit loop has like the three parts and i know like james clear talks about the you know habit cycle and then the power of habit also talks about it you have like a cue or a craving that says hey this is something that i want to go do then you have the routine so your brain says oh but we're supposed to go do that and it's almost like you'll shut off it's like driving home without realizing that you drove home yes. you just do it because that's your habit and then you have a reward, whether that reward is I came home, I had a sugary treat, I smoked a cigarette, I had a beer, whatever it is. And then you start all over. And there's always some sort of cue, like waking up in the morning could be someone's cue. They roll over, they grab their phone, they start doom scrolling, for example. Well, I don't know what their reward is in that. They would have to identify that themselves. But you kind of, you continue to do that. Well, if you interrupt that for yourself and start to change it, well, then you would identify as something else and your state then would change. So if your state, maybe let's say you wake up in the morning and you smoke a cigarette, okay? And that's your first thing. You pack smokes is on your uh, nightstand and you wake up, you grab them, you smoke a cigarette. So you identify as a smoker who immediately smokes in the morning. So then let's say that you like, I wanna quit. And so instead you replace the cigarettes there, you put them as far away as possible, maybe like locked in your car and you replace it with a glass of water. And so in the morning you would interrupt 
that routine that you have, which turns on your brain a little bit more and starts to make it think like, oh shit, something's not the same here. I have to be a little bit more thoughtful in what we're doing because we're not, we're not just going through the motions now. So you grab the water and you drink it. Well, now you're shifting your identity slowly as to someone who's not smoking first thing in the morning instead of someone who's drinking a glass of water first thing in the morning. And you can do that with anything. And what I found for me, and I think it's great, like Neville's method, I mean, everybody I think should know I'm obsessed with the man. I think he's wonderful. I don't think he's a deity, but I do. I think he's great. And I love reading his stuff. I also think he made it a little too immediate feeling where then people get frustrated because they're like, this isn't happening for me and I don't know why. Well, the more that you focus on this isn't happening for me, I'm frustrated, I'm in this victim mentality, the more that's what you identify with, the more that's what you get. And it becomes frustrating. But if you can start to identify small wins that are in line with being that person that you want, slowly it starts to come in. Like for me, I really wanted to launch this website. I really wanted to get my own thing going. And so I said, you know what, I'm just going to start every day doing something little, something small. Like I went to my LinkedIn profile and I changed my banner image to something about me. I added my website to my, you know, I launched the web, I bought the domain, et cetera. Um, those little things started to tell my brain, oh no, we're a new person now. We're doing this now. We don't identify with that old state any longer of wanting to do something and instead being stuck and not doing it, instead we're actually taking action. And I think that's the natural action that people get caught up on where they're like, well, I shouldn't have to do anything. Well, you're right. You shouldn't have to like forcefully do anything. It'll just start to come natural and you can trust yourself in that process. Um, and your brain's amazing. I mean, when, however the hell we got put together, we got put together very well because your brain can do new stuff and it'll start to fire in new ways and make new pathways that that habit, you know, cycle will always be there, but you can override it with something new and a new routine um, and a new reward. So you can, but that's what I found works. Like identify it, start making small changes. And then slowly your mind's like, oh yeah, we are this person. It's like somebody who wants to work out. If I get up every morning and I say, I'm going to go for a walk every damn morning. Well, after a while, I identify as somebody who does that. I identify as somebody who spends my mornings outside on a walk. And then it becomes natural and I actually feel awkward if I don't go. It, that happened to me this morning. I almost talked myself out of going for my morning walk with my dog. He's sitting right here. Thank goodness I'm not waking him up with the beloved W word. But so, um, and I almost talked myself out of it because I was running out of time to get stuff done this morning. And I felt so uncomfortable and knew that I would be so disappointed in myself later for not doing it that I got up and went, you know, on the walk. And so um, it's those really small shifts. And it's like all of a sudden before you know it, you're like, holy shit, I've really kind of reprogrammed how I view myself and what I think about myself. And um, that's why I think, I mean, I think affirmations can work too. I just think they take a little bit longer because they feel fake to start my yeah. two cents. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot, you know, I, and if I talk about affirmations probably not more than I should, but I talk about affirmations a lot because I like them as like a, as a foolproof tool, mm -hmm. but it, people usually misinterpret how to use it. They use them. And mm -hmm. We've got a bunch of videos talking about that um, in and of themselves. If you're not doing anything else, not changing your behavior and you're not changing your belief systems, you're just saying something over and over again, it usually is going to take far longer than these manifestation coaches promise. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's funny, like I, I almost think of the Neville line, you know, in assumption though false, if persisted and will harden into fact. Mm -hmm. In a, a weird way to, to kind of change that up, but it's relevant, it's like a habit, you know, even if it doesn't feel right, even if it feels forced, if persisted in, will harden into, you know, your actuality, it will harden right. into what you, your practice. And by doing that, you, you are shifting things. And, yeah. um, you know, I do recommend if, if people are interested in this approach, like, you know, uh, books like um, Atomic Habits or what's that Durning book, the one, you, the other one? Uh, uh, the Power of Habit. The Power of Habit. Yeah. There's, a, I mean, there's so many habit books, right? But there, and I mean, are there any, is there any that we, sh that like viewers should know of that, like, I, you know, I, I, I've always some of the habit books, like it's great common sense advice and like the, the famous 
books or the popular books are usually pretty damn good. Like a yeah. Tom Capus is a terrific book and will teach you something Agreed. and make, make Neville Neville's advice much more relevant to your life. There's also a course like this, that theory, which I don't know if I totally agree with, but you know, we're talking about neuroplasticity and I know Maxwell Maltz said like, you know, it takes 21 days to form a habit, whether that's totally true or not, there's something behind the idea that's very valid, which is that it takes a very short period of time to start shifting how you relate to the world and how yeah. your what your inner state is. And again, as your inner state changes, your external world is likely to change. And you can do that through habitual practice by changing your habits. Um, right. Yeah, I agree. And I think, you know, and some of them take a little bit longer, right? I think it kind of depends of on the person. Absolutely. And that's not, where I think people have to like, stop. Yeah, yeah let's not like frustrated. rush it. Exactly. Like relationship stuff or like deeply seated, like emotional trauma. Right. Like if you can just do that using simple habit building or Neville exercises, power to you. But people got to have some patience for a lot of this stuff. My gosh. Well, that's kind of the thing. I think people don't have patience and a lack of patience is actually just a reflection of a lack of faith. Right. That's right. right. And because that's you're so panicked about it. Correct. Yes. Yeah. That's a, like, a, I don't want to say it's kind of like a desperate state or a state where you, you feel uneasy and unstable. And like, you know, mm-hmm. a way to look at this, like just to give like some, a metaphorical math, let's say, let's say like, if you want to improve some aspect of your life, right. And you get 1% better a week, let's say. Okay. I know you can't really judge things that way, but let's just use that metaphor. If you get 1% better a week, you may hardly notice the improvement at first, but after, after a year, you're more than 50% better than you were. And again, remember that Joseph Murphy quote, when you're, when you're more than 50% there, you're going to manifest what you want. Like the, the tide has turned, your inner state has turned enough that you started to have real conviction that what, what you want to manifest, what you desire is going to happen. It's similar again, like we can, we can throw all this stuff, you know, on the wall and see what sticks. Some of this stuff with habit building certainly sticks with this far out manifesting stuff. It's not, it's not crazy. Did, did, no, did that, I think it all that, ties together. Well, yeah. and here's, here's the thing that I want to make sure that I don't want people to think that if you're only getting, you know, 1% better, that it's going to take you a year to get anything. So you can actually make small improvements daily. The way that you talk to yourself, the way that you manage your life. You and I both are big fans of like the nine five, five code um, by Richard Dots. I know that we've talked about it here before. Mm-hmm. I'm, I love that book. Like I literally tell everybody, you have to read this book. It'll really kind of open your mind. And it's the one that, you know, I think is like fantastic. Um, and part of that is because I think what he talks about is taking something and relaxing and saying, okay, I know that this is done. I've put this out there. I'm going to do this. Now I'm going to go actually enjoy my life. And what are things that I enjoy? And the more that you can do that, and the more that you start to relax into that, you really are making very small changes, very small daily changes that you may not even notice. Like this morning, the fact that I didn't want to skip my walk, or you may notice that you pick an apple over eating a donut, or you find that you, you know, um, instead of putting yourself down, you say something nice to yourself. These are all small 1% changes that really start to kind of quickly add up. And then you do start to see these changes happening in your life and they can happen really quickly. Um, I don't think that it's like that it takes a year to, you know, yeah. to get something. I don't want, want folks to think that for no. sure. With habit building, I mean, again, I'm not talking woo woo law of assumption stuff, which most people listening believe in, including us, but with like these habit building books, you read like a James Clear book, for instance, like, I mean, he talks about how you can significantly change something in much mm-hmm. faster than a year. Oh, so yeah. it, does, it doesn't have to be a year. I always try to like temper expectations and downplay stuff. Cause the point is like for like an SP thing, right. Or like, if you want to lose 50 or 60 pounds or something like that, it's okay. If it takes a year, if it right. took you a, a year to externally manifest your SP or lose a substantial amount of weight or get a big pay raise, would you right. wait a year? Right. And, you know, would you work on it, be joyful and expectant in that Richard Dots way, try to enjoy the process as much as you can, knowing that you weren't necessarily going to see any external changes right away and that it might take a year? Yeah, exactly. Would you, would you do it? If you're not willing to do that, 
I mean, I don't know. I'm just a hard ass, Cecilia. It, uh, for me, if people aren't willing to do that for most things, if it's not like a life and death situation, uh, you know, I tell them that manifesting advice isn't for them. I mean, you can do it sometimes, but like, it shouldn't be like something, it shouldn't be your fallback because it's like, you're, you're not going to magically pull stuff out of your ass all the time. You know what I mean? Like it's sometimes things take a little bit of time and that's okay. Like, I don't know. That's just how I, I think feel. here's the issue with anybody who's concerned about the time. If you're concerned about the time, it's because you're putting too much focus onto external um, conditions giving you either validation or happiness. Um, and I do want to take a second to apologize. I was a little distracted there because my children were asking me for millions of things when I'm on a call, which is just kind of how my life goes all the time. That is how I identify as a mom <laughs> who's always being asked questions. Um, That's how this channel rolls in general. Yeah, too. it's just the way that it is. They're like trying to like crawl under so that they, so nobody can see them on the camera and like show me their phone with like questions on it. And I'm like, oh my goodness, children, please <laughs> give me 10 minutes, 10 minutes. Um, but so if you're so focused on this time constraint, you're putting so much onto whatever external thing it is that you're trying to obtain, that's your delay right there. Instead, if you start focusing solely on yourself and these changes within yourself, the things that you can work on, what makes you feel good, which I know sounds like woo woo crap, but it is, it's true. Like just focus on what can make you feel good. Focus on the things that you enjoy really start taking these small actions that feel very natural to you within whatever goal that it is. And suddenly that stuff doesn't actually matter as much anymore. Now, it's not to say that if I want money that I'm like, oh, it doesn't matter. I don't have to have the money. No, I still live in this world and I still want money to have to have my things. But the more that you shift your world to that, at least what's been my experience, the less that I have to concern about money um, or be concerned about money or have this issue because it all just starts to flow in. And if you look at any successful person who talks about anything even closely related to the law of assumption, law of attraction, look at any spiritual guru who's written anything. I don't care if it's the power of now, the 955 code, Neville Goddard, um, you know, Joseph Murphy, any of them, they all have the same message. Like, calm down, be the person that you want to be, be them right now. Like Mel Robbins yesterday just had a reel, maybe I'll show you the day before, had a reel on her Instagram that was like, why are you waiting? Just be the person you want to be. Stop considering what it might be and wishing of what you can be. Just become that person. Just start acting like that person right now. So here's all the very successful people, the life coaches, the folks that are trying to teach you something, and they're all saying the same thing, just in a different way. Even like Abraham Hicks, you know, it's like, you know, feel good into the vortex kind of deal. And I'm not as overly familiar with them, but um, it's all the same message. But the people that always came to me and were so panicked about how long it was taking or how long is it going to take? And Neville said it was going to take only three days and et cetera they are on the wrong path and they are going to continue to have nothing but frustration because all that they're seeking is some external conditional change that they think will then bring them happiness. And it won't, let's say you want $50,000. All right, big whoop, who cares? You get 50 grand. Then what? Is that the end all be all? So now you're done. You, you know, you win the lottery. I don't care. You have $80 million. That's it. You're done. You have an SP that you want. All of a sudden they're sleeping next to you and you found out that they don't put the damn toilet seat down. So now what? Like, is that, they're here. I mean, is that the end? Um, so it really does become this thing that you have to go like internal, find that peace within you. And then your world really reflects it to you. I, I don't think a lot of people understand that. Yeah. And it is interesting how there's just this huge commonality where, like you said, most teachers, if not all teachers that you that are popular are basically saying that in in some level. Yeah, in different I, ways. Yeah. And I mean, I, I made a video the other day. Like I do think there's a there's a big issue where 
especially in the manifesting community, like the language is so overplayed, like the same mm-hmm. language, or like, like letting go, for instance, is a good example of that, like that phrase that like people don't necessarily know what it means, but it's like, once you start experimenting with this stuff in your life, at least in, in my case, I think in your case, you realize that like, basically, at least the manifesting stuff, it's like, they're literally all like basically talking about the same process and, and giving the same instructions in just different words and different, different phrases of like, right, exactly. Thing. Like, um, it just, it, it, it stuns me that more people don't seem to recognize that. I'm still surprised by it, honestly. Um, it just doesn't seem like that complicated to understand. It can be, don't get me wrong, much harder to apply the nuances of it. And, you know, when you feel like crap and stuff like that, but, but to understand the process and to be like, oh, this is different ways of basically looking at the same thing. Like that doesn't seem that crazy to me. And it's amazing still to me how many people are like well you got to do it the neville way law of assumption right. is it or whatever like or you know people are the same way about abraham hicks like they're the only vortex is the only thing that you know but it's like why be so dogmatic about it it's like we were talking about earlier it's like if you got something in your neck sure you can visualize the way you can also go to a doctor get a solve or do or, or whatever do whatever to get rid of the thing you know or do whatever to get to get the thing it comes back to feeling good and fulfilled in the present moment so, you know almost all these teachers are saying exactly that just using different language. And I do firmly believe in my own experience that, um, and I was actually just reading a lecture today, but I don't remember which one that it was, and I don't have my Kindle with me, but um, that, you know, talks about don't let the sun go down on your anger. And it's okay to feel the anger. Like it's actually a Neville lecture. I'm gonna have to find it and send you the link um, of which one it is. Cause I think people would get a lot of benefit from it. He actually this is a car, says in car there, video for you waiting to happen. I know it is. I know I need to start writing that stuff down too, but um, he says, feel the anger. If you need to have like kind of a hissy fit with yourself, freaking do it. He's not saying don't be a human being and don't feel the feelings that you feel because we are human. And even our negative, what we claim as negative emotions, anger, sadness, grief, etc. cetera, um, even those are teaching you something about not only who you are, but the way that you feel, the things that you care about. And when you start recognizing them, it's not like, I'm really freaking pissed off right now. And I'm going to be pissed off for a little bit. But then, you know, when you go to sleep, don't let the sun go down on that anger. Um, Go to sleep in a different state. And if you have trouble visualizing because it keeps you up, then don't do that. Like I've shared plenty of times. I don't visualize. It kind of ceases. I don't know. It's weird. But um, you just have to go to sleep in this like more, you know, relaxed, kind of joyful, gratitude, relief, whatever you want to call it, so that you're not going to sleep angry and just stewing on something because that's actually then what you're kind of continuing. But that doesn't mean that you can't feel upset or that you have to, you know, be only a specific way or um, always feel positive. Because I think that's the toxic positivity movement that people get caught up in is they're like, well, they say, you know, don't, don't think that because you'll produce it. Well, okay, but you're still a person, you're going to feel that way. You can like catch your feelings and say, okay, I get to choose how long I'm going to continue to dwell on this. If somebody cuts me off in traffic and almost hits me and I get mad, I can decide, is that going to actually affect the next four hours of my day? Am I going to go and everybody I run into, is that the only thing that I'm going to talk about today is like this douche who cut me off in traffic? No, I'm going to be like mad in the moment, let it go. I actually, I think I shared it on your channel. I, me, I tell my son all the time, I'm like, oh, I, I bet they have to poop. That's probably their problem. They have to cut me off because they have to get home and go to the bathroom like really bad. And that allows me to like, let it go. It's something really stupid and extremely immature. But um, that usually that's works. also part of, yeah, but it works. Right. And it could be true, which would be like sad. Nobody wants to poop their pants. like in traffic. <laughs> um, <laughs> so those are kind of other ways of letting go is what I was trying to, to go that's, back to. That's interesting. I do hope that and we can cover this next conversation we have together, or, you know, I hope you cover it, if not somewhere, yeah. you know, on, on your website or your channel. Um, cause I do think that I still think that's a justifiable, justifiable criticism of, of the new thought movement in the law of attraction movement in general is that they really don't talk enough about processing feelings and emotions, no. including I'm really interested in what Neville has to say there, because I can't think off the top of my head. And again, it's been a while like, since I've looked at a lot of his stuff, but um, I made a podcast episode a year or two ago where I was saying like Maxwell Maltz and psycho is the only 
manifesting, you know, when we think manifest teacher, yeah. she's the only one I can think of that, that talked about utilizing anger. The only one like so, with, with consistency and like, and like using okay. that. And I'm not saying that like, you know, anger is just one emotion, but like <laughs> for, for me, like one of the big changes in my life and my, my practice with this stuff and just my spiritual practice and just my sanity practice is, uh, has been accepting emotions more. Uh -huh. And, um, the main thing that's helped me do that is therapy. Yeah. <laughs> and that's not something that I thought would have been the case. Like even, even four or five years ago, I, I would have said no way. Like I, I would have solved that through weird spiritual stuff or this manifesting stuff. But I, right. I have, I still, I, I would love for you to delve more into that too. To, Cause I think it's very nuanced, you know, like the points of like, where they say like, you know, get angry, get upset, feel, feel, the, feel the feelings. Um, Cause yeah, I mean, that's, that's a huge thing that's helped me and it's helped so many people. It's helped a lot of my clients, like being okay, feeling the feelings. And um, like you said, toxic positive positivity and spiritual bypassing are so much more common in this uh, social media manifesting space than admitting that you have feelings. You know? so. Well, and I think Neville does, um, I know we're kind of running up on time, but I know that Neville does usually talk about kind of controlling your moods and, you know, really redirecting. But when, you know, my daughter called me um, a couple of days ago and she was kind of struggling with some stuff. And she's like, I don't know how to get my mind straight because I just kind of keep going back to this. And the more that I try to force it down, the more it comes back. And I'm like, well, yeah, because you're trying to force it down. And there's this part of you that's like, oh, hell no, I need to be heard. So anything that happens to you, there's a book by a freaking phenomenal woman that I know in my life. It's called More Yourself by Sarah Waters. She's a therapist. She's amazing. And she talks about how it was really eye-opening to me where she's like, you should get curious about the way that you feel because anything that comes up for you, things that trigger you or upset you, it's because there's a part of you that feels like it's doing that to protect something of you. So whether you want to look at that as like an inner child that's being protected, or you need to look at that as like, past you that needs to be protected. If I get upset over something, it's because my mind feels that it's doing some sort of protection justice for me by doing this. It's putting up something. So if I get curious about why do I feel that way? Why would I do that to myself? Why would I get mad at this person? I can really start to, one, identify the way that I feel and using it. Um, like there's another technique called like the name attainment, which is scientifically proven to chill you the F out, right? Where it's like, what do I feel right now? And why? What about me? What part of me is being triggered in this? Is it because I feel like you attacked my children? I feel like you attacked my political stance, whatever it is. Um, and it really calms you down very quickly because it allows you to, to bring that emotion back to looking at yourself internally. Why do I feel this way? What is going on with me? And then it just, I don't know, it just like chills it out for some reason. Um, I'm not a neuroscientist. I'm not a therapist. I just know that it works. Uh, and so it's really very interesting to me how that kind of stuff can work. And um, my daughter was like, you know, I, I don't know how to get out of this. And I said, well, the, the difference is you can recognize that you feel that way. Don't try to ignore it. That is, you know, even what Neville talks about. Instead, say, you know, I'll tell myself, yeah, I know that you feel that way right now. But remember, we're actually directing and looking at this instead because this is better for us. And it really, and I do, I talk to myself like, like we're just all sorts of separate people inside my own little head. Um, and it just calms me down. And then my mind can go somewhere else and I don't continue to dwell on it. And if I do, then I need to come back to it and understand why I'm struggling to get past a certain emotion. Do, is there something that I need to let out? Yeah, so powerful. When we look at these emotions more um, non-judgmentally, intimately, you know, just it, it's really powerful. Um, yeah. And be thankful for them. They're showing a, you something. A, gr a great compliment to Neville, to, to law of assumption, law of attraction, manifesting material, in my opinion, a huge component that we can put, bring in. It's really nice. Um, right. I'll link to a, a series I did, a couple of videos I did on it. Um, yeah. So yeah, we have to go, but next time we'll, um, 
God knows what we'll do next time. I mean, you're going to be, Who knows? A, a, you're going to be a YouTube superstar by next time. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Listen, so everybody thank look, you. look for Cecilia's channel. I'm going to stop recording. We're going to chat for a second, but uh, yeah, look for Cecilia's channel. All the links are in the description and until next time, enjoy. <laughs>